Hello everyone, welcome to the second episode of the Compact Coaster series. I did make a couple tweaks to the scenario. Uh, they include an objective update. I added the medium objective to at most have six fear as well as the easy objective and the hard objective I left at five fear and I dropped the nausea on that one down to three to make that one a little bit more challenging but also as you saw in the last video we had a good coaster but it didn't meet any of the objectives because the fear was just over five and that was the old max for fear. I also added in a little bit of scenery so that way we can do a couple basic things to the station or add some effects if we want to. Same thing with the basic buildings, so we've got the signs. Those should be unlocked in most all scenarios, so they could still be used in any career mode or challenge objective. Maybe not the hard challenges because they really don't give you much to start out with. All right, I think in this episode I'm going to do a second wood coaster before moving on to a different coaster type. I will of course be using a different area of the map. I think for this one I might try to fit something in this T zone here. With perhaps the station on the T. No, I think I'd rather have the T section kind of be where the hills are and the a nice part of the coaster to look onto from uh, other parts of the park. So I might look at putting the coaster in one of these ends. Or maybe even diagonal in one of the corners, that could be neat. Yeah, we'll go for that, and I'll just raise it up just a little bit in case we need a little extra starting height and can never hurt. And I also think with this one, I do want to uh, utilize one of the thrill ride placeholders. I'm not going to use the square. I think I'm going to use the round one since the corner of the T is already sort of, uh, you know, rounding off nicely for that corner. So I'll just kind of place that one there so make sure we don't come across that corner there too harshly and we can kind of round it out to fit a thrill ride if we want to. And let's get back to editing. I, was, uh, I feel like I'm set up to go to the left naturally. So I'm actually going to go to the right since I kind of try to break the natural instinct a little bit. And I do want to overall keep this one a little bit less intense uh, than the previous episode since uh, I feel like wood coasters in general aren't supposed to be quite as intense as maybe some of the ones that you can do inversions and that sort of thing with. But I do want to uh, have a fairly high speed on this one. Just not so many quick turns and that sort of thing. That's kind of looking like a nice height to start off with. Oops, I'm gonna switch over to standard track, my help. And I, since I'm coming close to the end here, I'm feeling like a drop and then a turn and then another drop rather than just one giant drop all by itself. I've got snap on. I was wondering why I was kind of trying to limit me to the, the 45 degrees there. I 
try to stay inside the barrier as best I can. Of course, in the end, it doesn't super matter. As long as we're keeping it compact, that's the idea. Since we're going to come in with some speed, I don't want to get into that drop too fast. Kind of make it a nice, smooth curve out. And I think off of this hill, I'll just end up coming straight back at the station and going over it. For this one I am going to go ahead and snap to zero and then use my length to find the ground there. And I'm start a little bank and kind of do a off kilter hill here. this one to be close to the same height as the last hill since we'll be carrying some good speed. I might actually go to zero on that one. Oh, I'm already at max length so I'm not going to go quite to zero. Back up one and get a little bit more of an angle. getting right to the edge of the border there. able to really get the turn as wide as I was hoping for there. So instead of doing a down hill, I think I'm going to just going to back up and off this little mini drop actually just start to go back uphill and then do the turn going up so that way I can have it a tighter turn without it being as intense. For symmetry sake with this ride, I, I want to you know, go from each end to the extreme to the other so that way it doesn't look off balanced. And let's get a real nice bank in here. And I'm going to kind of flatten this one off. I'm going to really hold the bank, but maybe not that much, and then start one of these downhill things, but holding the bank. I like the looks of those. And then I think from here I can kind of sidewind out and go to the bottom portion of the T. Maybe here we can go without the catwalk. Actually, I'll just keep the catwalk on the whole entire time. I've not noticed what that banking offset is. But that might be in that banking. Maybe we'll look into that later. glance at that, make sure I'm not coming through anything too harshly. So that is looking a little bit intense, maybe it's coming in too quickly, you know, changing directions. Kind of try to lessen that just a little bit, make it a little shallower There we go, 
that looks a little bit better. Still looks like it could be pretty intense. could get out and around in that area to go out into the T section perhaps not though perhaps here I can do like a little S bend sort of thing and then go down right side the thrill ride on the outside of the main drop. Yeah, I kind of like the look of that. I think that's a good way to go. Except for now, I don't don't know where I'm going to go with it next. Obviously I've got to go to the inside somehow. Not really sure how much speed we're going to be carrying through that turn either. I can't imagine that we'll be having much speed. I might actually just go ahead and start the test just to see how fast we're coming through that last section there. And speed the game up. And go ahead and turn my speed heat map on. decent bit more speed than I was originally thinking there would be. I was kind of thinking I would creep that hill at 15 or so, not 30. Not giving me the option for the last run. Oh well, I was going to check the previous bank that we made. Stop testing. Uh, I'm not so pleased with. I like the S bin portion, but I don't really care for how we're going to have to try to work it back to the coaster. I'm just going to actually back up a little bit and we'll look at uh, coming over into the T portion like I was originally thinking. Gonna keep all that going downhill a little bit. And that gives us room to start coming uphill before we actually make into that turn there.
also not quite liking the way that turns coming out. I think I need to reduce some of my banking first. Maybe we can get into a steeper drop here. So um, that tip of the T, I want to be at a peak with the turn. So that way the coaster gives off the nice supports look. I'm going to run out of space there. back it up and start that drop just a little sooner might make that turn come up a little faster as well shorten that to get a quicker transition so we can really get some of them negative G's Hopefully that will help with the excitement rating. And that should leave us plenty of room to get back into the coaster. I was thinking after this hill, that's when we could go around the thrill ride nicely. And then under our first drop over the bottom of the first drop and back into the station. At least that's kind of what I've got in mind right now. Try to keep that like a mirror image of the other side. At that point, I'm coming down some. just a little bit that's looking symmetrical enough at least I think I'm supposed to be going out a little bit there Pretty close. Plateau there, so we can make our nice turn right around the thrill ride. I actually take a smaller piece to start the turn a little later. Do you think I'm going to cut the catwalk on these sections here? Uh, 
I guess I'm in the same situation. Kind of gotta go uphill again. Uh, either that or put in brakes, but I don't know how much I'm gonna do either one of those things. I guess I'll go for the hill first. Maybe a combination of both will lend itself to be a nice choice. Biggest thing is I don't want to knock out all the supports on this back end and make it look like this whole structure is floating. And it ended up kind of coming right into the center nicely, I think. I do plan on going back and adding some trim breaks probably in that turn just to not come through this section so fast. about right. Autocomplete's terrible. We do only have 256 uh, cash left. to get in with $44 cash, uh, whatever currency you want to believe it is, and I think it came out pretty nice. It was a little larger than I was initially thinking it would be, but let's take this one for a ride. Of course, forgot to up the chain speed at first. Obviously going way too slow in that section. That'll probably lend itself to be a good thing though since lowering that will bring some of our budget back. We're going a little fast in that last section but not as fast as I was thinking. But I also didn't think that we would just barely make it over one of those hills. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the testing. Our first results were 5.7, 3.5, and 1.1, which aren't terrible, but they could definitely be a little better than that. I really don't know why I'm not getting the previous run option under the heat maps. I feel like that changed after the most recent update, which was the addition of like, the movie scenes and that sort of thing. And that option seems to have kind of disappeared, which is very unfortunate because I used that one a lot. <laughs> 
So I'm going to go ahead and uh, just play one one more test through. Well, there's that. There we go. I've got previous run now. Interesting. Maybe I was just messing something up there. It wasn't actually with the update. But we'll pause it there. So I think lowering this uh, first kind of section with the 3.7 here is going a little bit slow. So we can probably just kind of plateau that one instead of going up so much. And then same thing with the other turn, really. I think if we plateau that one or lower the whole thing, then carry more speed and some more excitement. All right, let's get working on that. I don't want to mess this section too much because I really love the look of it. But it does need to come down just a smidge. And hopefully that will smooth out nicely. I think I might actually raise the peak of it here just a little bit. But man, I really like the look of, I don't know, it's just kind of swooshy with the turns. It's pretty awesome. Okay, let's see, okay, that top peak there was fairly exciting. Just going to go ahead and drop this hole back in. And also, just as a note, whenever I'm dropping like a section like this, I'm really trying to make sure I pick the same point on either end, if that makes sense. So I'm not choosing like half of the first hill and then all of the second hill, because then when you lower it and you start to smooth it, uh, it kind of gets off balance and looks funky. So this way, you know, it kind of does the same thing to both hills. And then when you smooth it, it kind of treats them the same. Not quite though, we lost a bit of our symmetry there. But I think that's due to one of these pieces just being a longer piece there. So you can see the pieces above the last piece of the hills. They look pretty close to the same, like those. I just move those adjustments, maybe you can see it a little better. Those look like they mimic nicely, but I had this piece being longer than the other one, so I think that's why it kind of messed up a little bit. So I'm actually just going to delete that one and try to match the other side just a little bit more. Yeah, I think that's matching it nicely. Then I'll catch one smooth, some banking smooth there. And since this last section wasn't quite as intense as I thought, and now we're up to 160, so we definitely have enough for some break sections. I think I'm actually just going to kind of try to lift this whole section just a little bit. And then grab a few more pieces of length there before I start smoothing. I'm going to try adding in just a smidge of bank there and also on the tail end of that turn and I want this short corner here to have the catwalk there we go, I think that works out oh now I can try that uh, offset catwalk thing, what does that do? it's not really doing uh much of anything. So maybe it does something else. And I think we should probably test it one more time. Let's see what our uh, we lost our statistics since we edited it. I want to look at the overall runtime uh, and see if maybe we should add in a block break section somewhere if the coaster is taking a long time to run. 
you know, block break sections are pretty key when you're trying to maximize profit. Yeah, it's over a minute long, so a second car would really help out. Really not sure where I could put another block break section in. Uh, our excitement rating came up a little bit, so that's good. And we've also got 175 now, which is also good. Let's see if we can check. Still can't check our previous run on the heat map. I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong there. I used to do it frequently without issue or problem. Uh, so I'm going to run this one with the speed heat map and see if we can find a decent place for a block break section. I don't want to put one just right at the end. I don't think that would really help us too much. I think we would end up getting stuck at the top of the chain lift frequently. Speaking of, I need to remember to adjust that. Testing. Just wanted to grab a quick look at the excitement. Uh, I was thinking maybe we could do something with this uh, swooshy dip turn thing here. If we maybe made our dip lower and then kept the same kind of swoosh, maybe that would make it a little more exciting. Uh, unfortunately, I'm, I don't think there's much I could really do about this uh, bank in the T section. But still, being over five is is good for those sections i think up in the chain will probably fix a bit of it so let's think about putting the block break section right before we enter under the first drop here uh, that would mean a little bit of a track adjustment but that could be okay See if uh, $175 can get the job done. Whoa. <laughs> Sometimes it can do some funny things. Alright, so I'm going to have that on a very slight decline. Should be let me have a section right now. Let me go back to the turn piece and actually turn snap on. Make sure I'm at zero. All right, yeah, now let me have the block break. Except for is it expensive? Yes, 312. Well, it's 156 if we make it really short. <laughs> uh, so I guess really short is how it will have to be. I mean, maybe I'll take that loan out of a thousand just to make sure that it's a little more functional than meeting the budget. It's a much straighter. Interesting. I didn't think you could have uh, block brakes on an uphill section. I thought it was only downhill or flat. this previous hill much sooner. Maybe we 
coming straight out of that turn. That doesn't look so bad. I think a majority of the car will be hanging uh, on the hill still. So, whoops, I meant to. Oh, and backing up, that's why. Use uh, Control Y to redo those. I'll right click to back up. I do kind of like the way that snap looked, but I'm going to go back and just add a couple more regular track just so that way I know I have more room for the car to actually sit up there. This one to be a steeper jump up the hill rather than that gradual hill it was trying to give me. There we go. I think that one looks nice. That took a few more minutes. Let's play this one. I just forgot to turn the section on. And I forgot to change the lift again. Let's go to here and that to 12. And check our block section and two cars. Okay, that's good. There's only one car holding off the edge, which I don't think that's going to be a problem. I do want to edit this section. First, I'm going to grab this one because I did not want the catwalk. And I'm going to up the release speed and the release acceleration uh, to as high as I can get it. And, well, just kidding, I only have $11. I'm not adding in anything. <laughs> Alright, let's take this one for a ride. chain lift help that first section go by a little more exciting. There we go. If we had a sudden stop there, I don't think it would be so terrible. We're peaking that hill at a relatively low speed. last little turn was going to be too fast. I did think I was I'd originally planned on adding some friction brakes just before that turn there. And if we end up dropping that section, maybe we'll come up with a little more cash. I thought the bank there was a little bit intense. Our rating came out really nice actually uh, so since we only have $11 I'm not gonna mess with any of that too much 
uh, perhaps once guests get on, yeah, or the second car comes through, the ratings would drop a little. That's the downside to the block brake sections. Uh, yep, on this one, let's put our entrance and exit on the outside. Gotta connect it to a regular path. There we go. All right, so we made the made it to silver with this coaster. I'm pretty pr pleased with the looks of the coaster. Uh, it's not quite got as much symmetry as I was hoping for, but I really like this. Um, again, kind of like a figure eight thing, like we did in the other video, but at the same time, it's quite different. And I like the, the symmetry of this last hill here. Uh, I was thinking about placing you know, some signage or something on that hill, but due to having a dollar left in our bank, uh, maybe not so much. I didn't work around the thrill ride as much as I had really wanted to. It's kind of like they are not there. It's all the same really. Um, of course, you could put one there if you wanted to, but my original intent with these thrill ride boundary markers is to really incorporate one. Uh, if you had seen one of my career mode ones where we've got a hammer swing sitting like in the inside of a ride, uh, that was kind of the driven thought behind adding in these barriers so we could do that later. So maybe perhaps if we had used the rectangle one, we could have made this end part of the T kind of swing out and be able to fit a ride in it. I'm sure uh, in future episodes we'll have a ride that incorporates the thrill rides a bit better. Anyways, thanks for watching episode 2 of the Coaster Challenge series. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, hope you learned some little technique that you could apply to your coaster building and perhaps bring your game to the next level. Uh, as always, this will be available for download, so check out the description for that link. Please drop me a comment. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. If you have any ideas of anything you'd like me to try to build, let me know and I will give it a go. Thanks for watching, guys.